All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Fridays with Fiscal. Uh, this is our last Fridays with Fiscal of the calendar year. Um, so we almost made it to 2021. Um, what we're going to talk about today is customizing forms in the software. And um, this can be done in both the USAS side and the USPS side. Uh, basically, this is uh, an optional way to customize when you're printing uh, individual records to PDF. <coughs> Bless you. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Um, so yes, please uh, make sure you're muted. If you wanna unmute and ask a question at any point in the way, please feel free. Um, I have the chat open, so I'll keep an eye on that. Um, so certainly if you have questions, let me know. Um, all right, so in the documentation, we do have a page about customizing forms for both USAS and USPS. Um, this is going to be in the appendix. And I'm just gonna open USSR first here. Um, in the appendix, it's under the useful procedures. And let's see, it is creating custom forms for printing PDF transactions. Now, um, I'm gonna show this USAS page, but we're gonna actually end up hopping to USPS to do our first examples. And then I'm gonna switch over to Michelle about halfway through and she's gonna come back and talk more about um, a USAS example using the billings, using the AR billings. Um, so what we're talking about customizing here is not when you're printing like a PDF report, it's when you're actually printing a transaction or a record. So. Um, you can see our templates here for the USAS side. This is um, the billings, a purchase order, requisition, things that are going to have a unique record. It'll be unique information for each record, I guess. Um, let's see. So the software is built to use a standard template for each of these already. So you can go in right now and print a requisition um, from the software and it's going to use the built-in form. Um, but what we're talking about with this is if you want to change that up, you can. So um, I'm just going to open this requisition template. This is the standard template that you would see now so we can kind of get an idea of what this looks like. And it looks kind of, it's not so pretty when you're looking at it in the form version. Um, but what we see here is that there are some standard text fields that will show. So you have these headers like the requisition number, um, the requested PO date, and then you have uh, these fields that are in these little brackets um, that say, you know, rec number, uh, the rec date, and those are what we're going to call fields. And those are what you can, well, actually you can customize any of this, um, but what those are going to do is pull in the specific information for that record. So each requisition is going to have a different requisition number. It's going to have, you know, the date connected with that requisition number. And so when you use this form to print, the text fields are going to be exactly the same for every requisition you print, but the fields are going to vary based on which one you're printing. Um, let's see. Okay. So let's hop to USPS because I want to show you where that documentation page is. So again, I'm going to the appendix and I'm going to useful procedures. This one's called creating customized email notification forms. In the USPS side, really the unique um, records that you'd be printing, it's a little bit different, you know, with payroll. Um, the main reason that you would use this in USPS is to customize the direct deposit uh, forms. So when you print those direct deposits to PDF, it has a standard, here's our standard form. Um, this is the standard layout. But um, when you print this or when you email direct deposits with redesign, it does get attached to that email as a PDF. So it uses the same form as well. in order to get the template form to start with. Um, and I did wanna say, with talking about the templates, so uh, if you wanna customize these, do you have to start with a template? No, you could 
start from scratch if you really wanted to, um, if you had a lot of knowledge in uh, mail merge and how to update this and add stuff, you could, but I think it's a whole lot easier to start with the template and then kind of move things around. So um, that's definitely what we're gonna <laughs> look at doing today. Um, so here is the template for the direct deposit. And the first step I'm gonna do is download that to my computer. Because what we want to do is open this in Word. Okay. So here's what it looks like. Um, now that we're looking at this one, you can see we have kind of the same idea. We have text um, on here, and that's going to be the same for every record. And then we have these different fields that are included. Um, to get started, I just kind of want to show a basic update so that we can look at like how you get this back in. I want to do this a couple of times um, so that just kind of we look at basics first. So the first thing I'm going to do just so that we can change this up a little bit is let's make some um, different things bold here. You can uh, change the formatting. Now that this is a PDF as opposed to classic where this was kind of like a text file, um, you can insert images, uh, I, we can change the color here, let's make this blue. And so we can, um, even if it's just as simple as changing the formatting, uh, that is something that we can do to customize this form. So let me save this. And then, Sorry, I had this open before. Let me get back to my main page. Okay. Um, so let's see. Okay. So now what we want to do, and that's just like our basic customization. We'll go look at those fields in a minute here. Um, but if we want to bring this back into the software, we're going to go to the report manager. And we're going to use this option to create a form. Now, this is where we get to enter information. The report name is what is going to show uh, when a user wants to select this form. So, let's make it that since we kind of made it bold. The description, that's optional, can be whatever you want. Um, the entity type. So this is going to depend on what kind of form you are bringing into the system, what you're going to use it for. So in USAS, when you are looking to pull in, like, you know, whether it's a purchase order, requisition form, that's going to link to which kind of transaction you're pulling. For um, the direct deposits, this is in the documentation. It has to be a very specific one. And um, so I, let me see, I know which one it is, but I don't want to say it wrong. It's payment detail payroll direct deposit. So you can go find that from the drop down list, or I knew it started with payment. So I figured I'd just start with that so we don't have to scroll too much. Um, but it has to be this entity type to be able to be used with the direct deposit notices. And then we're going to go ahead and select form, and this is where it's going to um, we're going to go to our files and locate that form that we just saved. And I can save this up. It's going to add it to my grid. But see, it's not a report or anything, so I don't have a generate option here. Um, in order to use this, um, where I can test it in USPS, is I would go to the payments, I'm going to go to payroll, and then right from this payroll payments grid, I can um, select one or multiple records, and I would be able to generate a printed PDF file from here. Um, so I have this pulled up. I'm going to select the direct deposits and a PDF. 
once I do this, I see I have this direct deposit form here. Now, default, that's what's in there for everybody. That's what you'd normally have. Now that we've added one, I have this option in the drop down. Um, so technically, with these forms, if you wanted to have like different versions of them, you could. Um, I don't know if direct deposits, if that makes a whole lot of sense. Um, you know, maybe I guess if they're doing if they wanted something different for like supplemental direct deposits, I don't, I'm not sure. There could be applications of that. Um, but if you did want to have more than one style of custom form, you, you could have more than one drop down. Um, so let's select that. And then I'm going to click process payments. This is what's going to generate the form and print it. I'm not actually processing anything. I'm not running a payroll. Um, but that's going to go ahead and start creating my direct deposit form. Sorry, <laughs> hit my desk there. All right. So now I can see these printed using my custom form. I have my blue header, I have the bold. Um, so if I'm making simple updates, that's pretty easy, you know, to just um, update and bring it back in. Now where this gets more complicated is if you want to start moving things around or adding fields. Um, and I will give you a disclaimer on this. So adding fields, um, we're going to look at some simple examples. But if you're trying to make like major changes, this is something that, you know, does may require some knowledge of mail merge within uh, Word. So um, adding things, it, it can get a little bit more complex. You see how easy it is to bring new ones in. Um, I'm no expert in mail merge is what I'm saying. I've uh, worked with these a bit. There are certainly things we can help you with um, as far as moving things around. So if there's something specific that you want to do, please put in a ticket. We'll do our best to help. Um, the other thing is there's a lot of fields. So at this point, the fields could be changing. Uh, there's an extensive amount that you could possibly choose from. So we don't have like a solid, you know, full list. The same with like the report fields. There's so many, you can grab them different ways. Um, so again, we'll try and help you with that. But at this point, it's not fully like, you know, out there and documented. Uh, perhaps down the line, that's something that we'll be able to do. Um, but yeah, so today we're kind of going with the basics, but just know this could be, you know, this could be a whole lot bigger. Um, and, you know, hopefully down the line, that's something we'll be able to um, look at getting out there. All right, so, oh, before we hop into the other form, the other thing I want to mention, uh, let me go back here. So we looked at printing from this page, and um, this is how I would test. So if I'm, if I'm trying to update my direct deposit form, um, and I want them to, you know, print a certain way, I want my PDF to be a certain way, I would come in here and I would click print and that's how I can see it and I can verify that looks how I want. Um, however, once you're all done, you want the district to be able to use that um, so that they can set up their email notices with that. So let's see, I think this is actually in our documentation here. In the top. Getting a little mouse happy here. Here's my screenshot. Okay. So once you have it in there and set, um, when they're actually in the middle of a payroll um, and they're finishing up their payroll and they want to schedule those email notices, you know, they'll use the email notices option and they will have this same pop up um, where they have this direct deposit form and they can select it from the list. So um, once you have the form, it'll show there too. And then you, you select that form when it's um, being scheduled and it'll send your email notices with that form. The other thing to note here is that um, if the district uses kiosk, and you want the form that's used for the kiosk pay slips to also be your custom form, you would go to system configuration. And you have this option for payment printing configuration. 
And so if you open this up, you also have a default direct deposit form here. And this is where you can select a custom form. And then that one would be used for the pay slips that um, get created for kiosks. Or like when they look at them on kiosks. Um, and then I see Andrew's asking, is there a way to set the default to the DD form? You know what? I think this option, let's choose this option because um, I think this one may set our default as well. I think we can test this right now. Um, I think this. I'm not sure. I'll have to check to see if like the actual default can be changed. Um, if it's not something that can be done right now, I'm pretty sure we have a Jira issue for that. So um, I will check on that for you, Andrew. All right, so let's go back to the forms. I just wanna make sure I mention those different places that can be used. Um, so if we go back here, this is where it gets a little, little bit more complicated if we're going to be actually modifying the fields. Uh, so I'm gonna use a pretty simple example here. But I want to show you a couple tricks that I use when I'm going to modify this. Uh, the first thing is that this form, because of like how everything's kind of centered and mapped out, um, if I highlight some of these, you see how I have this little um, like cursor that pops up? Basically, this whole form is set up in tables. Um, and that helps everything you know stay in the proper spot. So the first thing I like to do when I go to edit something like this is I would do select all. And then I'm gonna come up here and add borders so that I can see where the tables are. Um, now, before we actually save this up, we wanna go remove those borders again and we can do it the same way with the select all and take them out. But this really helped me out when um, whenever I've been looking at modifying these forms, just so you can kind of see where things are going. Um, if you need to add another line, it just makes it a whole lot easier. Amanda, could you show me again where you got the, to the borders? How did you create that? Sure, it's it's this icon right here. Mm -hmm. You um, select it all down. and then you just went in there. Okay. Yep, yep, so the select all, I mean, you could probably like highlight if you wanted a certain section, but yeah, I like to just select all. And it's this drop down right here. I gave it all borders. Um, and then here, let me show you real quick. If we select all, if we want them to go away, I'm just going to select the no border option. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, give them all borders. Okay. Um, so if we come in here, let's do an example. Um, I'm just going to enter down a couple so that we have uh, some space in here to add something else. And let's add like a pay period add date is what I'm going to use for an example. Now, um, there are a couple ways to add a field. So if you wanted to straight add a field from scratch, what you would do is go to insert. And you're gonna to go to this quick parts option. And then you're gonna select field. Um, this is there, this is in, um, there's an example in the USPS side of the documentation of adding things. And so these steps are included in there. Um, the next thing you're gonna do is select a merge field. And you get this little pop-up. So um, what you need to do now is to enter a field name. The field name is what we're seeing here as far as like, you know, street one or pay date, um, address. Now, in order to figure out like what that is based on what you're wanting to pull in, there are a couple different ways to do it. Um, this is where it can get tricky sometimes because it depends on if you're pulling a field that's like directly from the record or if you think about um, 
how it is when you're pulling fields from reports. Like, you know, sometimes it can be from a drop down. Um, so how I would find this, I'm gonna go back to the software. And I have a couple tricks uh, for the USPS side for the direct deposits. Um, what I'm going to do to find this is I want to know what that field is called based on the object that we're using this for. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. So I go to the custom report creator. And when I go to select my object, what I can do is I can go find that same object that this is going to be pulled in for. So remember when I added the form um, and I had to select that payment detail payroll direct deposit. So that's what it's going to be used with. So I want the fields to be for that same object. So if I open the custom report creator and pick that object, now I can see all of these fields. And in order to get what the field would be called, I can just hover right over it. So I want the period, uh, the pay period ending date. So if I hover over this, I can see that it has like um, period and then end is capitalized. So that's what my field name is going to be. Now, if you're in the USAS side, uh, some of the objects are more straightforward, like it might be directly to the requisition object. Uh, so you also have the option to like hover over these if you're using an advanced query. Um, you could also pull a grid to a report and do like the Excel field names. Um, so those are a couple of different ways to get it. But for here, uh, for, for the payroll side, this is pretty much the way I go because the grids um, are a little bit more complex because it's showing checks and direct deposits. So for this one, um, this is how I would look at them. So then you could usually type the field name in here. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I don't always love just adding the field directly uh, with a new field because some of these also can have different formatting that you can enter in with the field properties. Um, if you want more information on that, that might be something you can Google or look into like uh, Microsoft Word documentation. Um, I'm certainly no expert on that, but I do have a trick to get around it. Uh, so instead of adding this from scratch, what I would do is I would say, okay, I want this to be a pay period ending date. So let me copy the pay date because that's going to be in the same format. And then I'm going to edit it instead of adding it from scratch. Um, so now that I copied and pasted it, if I want to edit a field, I need to right click, click to edit the field. You can't just you can't just type directly over it. You have to actually edit the field, or else it won't um, it won't work. Um, but once we open it up, we get the same window as if you're adding. And then I can come in here, and I see where pay date is. So I'm just going to do I'm going to replace that field name with the field name that I want. All the rest of that stuff is saying that it's like you know a date and time. Um, and then that's doing that. So once I hit OK, now that's set up to pull um, my period and date instead. A couple other things to note in here um, as we're looking at this form. Um, there are some of these sections. So uh, see here, like this is the following amounts are posted. Um, sorry, have been. Uh, deposited to your accounts. So right here, this is set up to have a list of all of the different um, direct deposit destinations. So they might have multiple of these. Um, when I see this, see, I, I have this little like DD to start. I can click edit to go look at these. And some of these are more complicated. So this is a list. And this section would actually like if they have multiple, it'll allow it to list it out. Same thing here, um, this is going to be uh, with like their different jobs. Uh, down at the bottom here, it's, um, what is this section looking for? The deductions, so the deductions will do a list because there'll be multiple deductions for one person. Um, 
again, that's getting a little bit more complicated. I just want to mention some of those different things that you might see within there um, to actually like add those. It would probably take a bit more research. So we're not going quite that deep today. Um, but just to point out some of those different things that you may see when you're editing. I do have a question from the chat. Uh, Leah says, is there a reason the default direct deposit form is two pages long? Um, let me go ahead and um, let's get our borders off here so we can see this again, because this is something that I wanted to mention. So we have this standard form. It's got all of the information in here. Now, see how there is um, there are these two little commands here. What this sets up is that when this like record is done, it's going to start a new page for the next record. So um, you know this direct deposit is for Johnny, and then you know Sally's is on the next page that's saying that it, it's going to start over. So if this person, um, maybe they don't have the, that much information on it, you wouldn't want the next one to start at the bottom of this page. You want it to be a, you know, a, a page break, basically. It's a page break. Um, sometimes when I've been editing, this does get messed up. Um, if there's like a space or something, <laughs> again, I don't 100% know um, like how these are coded because this is one of those more complex things. But my trick is, if this ever gets messed up, I would go right back to the um, original template and then just copy this and paste it into your form so that you're, because that is set up to do the page break. Okay. Um, so let's hop over to then, I have another form um, that I wanted to show you here. So this is kind of like our standard we're playing with, you know, say we like add and move fields. Um, this one is one, um, it's based on a form that I actually had started playing like a long time ago before I was, <laughs> when I was still at the ITC. Um, and then I think that there's different versions of this one that's, that's been floating around. So this form actually did come from, um, the standard form and then things were just moved around on it. So you can see like how different this can end up being. Um, you know, this has, you know, actually things off to the side here and the deductions are kind of moved around so that this in, um, takes up like the whole uh, way across. Um, and then these balances at the bottom are kind of moved around. But the other thing you can see here is that there is a logo in here. Um, so if you wanted to add uh, an image, all you'd have to do is go insert, you know, and then pictures, you can select a picture from your computer. And since this is a PDF now, the PDF can handle, you know, not only like colored text from different fonts, but it can handle images as well. So a district could put their logo right on their direct deposit notice and make that look nice. Um, and let's go back in here one more time and um, I'm going to upload this one to show you what it looks like. Uh, so again, we're going to go back to the report manager to import our form. Create form and we're going to do And then we'll do payments, payroll. This is where we're just going to print our test one. And um, my logo is stretched. I think that's because I had, I already had it in there and I replaced something with this one. So um, if you were to insert the logo fresh, I think it would be fine. 
Um, but we can see the different information, how this pulls, um, you know, just for an example of like how different you can change this from that standard um, notice. And I'm sure you could find ways to even change it more. <laughs> One of the reasons I wanted to import this again, though, is to show you this other trick that I have. So when you're customizing these forms, you're coming in here to test, you might have to do this a couple of times. Um, you know, when I made one way back when, like, I want to say I had, like, I don't know, more than 20 different times that I imported because I was tweaking things. Like, you might, you might play with it. You might kind of, like, want your formatting. You know, okay, I need to move that a little bit with this table. And so if you're working on this and you're coming in here and testing a form, um, you have to create the form from the report manager, but then you're going to be testing on this page. So the first thing, you know, you could have multiple tabs open. Uh, that's a good way to go. But when you're testing, you don't have to create a new form every single time. So I left my window open here from when I um, added the form. And when I come in here, I can see, you know, I set this up, logo DB notice. I could just select the form again to so say I went and updated it in Word. I could go select it again, open it, and then save it. And then I would be able to go ahead and print it again, and it would take my updates. Um, and it would show me that, you know, when it generates the PDF. So just kind of like a quick tip when you are editing, you don't have to actually like create a new form with a new name every single time. So that kind of makes it a little bit easier um, when you're going through that process. Um, let's see, I feel like I just want to make sure I covered all of my quick tips here. Yeah, I think I got I think I got all my little tricks in. Um, so next, we're going to switch over to USAS and look at the billings. Um, and Michelle's going to show an example of that. Um, while we get switched over, does anybody else have any questions um, specific to this USPS side? Um, let me know. Amanda. Yes. Can you pull up the template, the Word document again? I have a question on it. This one? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, the one with the coding in it. So right there in between under current deductions, between year to date amount and name, mm -hmm. there's like a little like arrows facing away from each other, kind of a piece that isn't wrapping like a field name. What is the function of that little thing? I did the edit field on it and it says like at before row payroll items as OPI. I don't know what that, I'm not sure what it's doing. It's caused some spacing issues for when I try to move things around and I just wanted to know what its purpose was. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, I must, I must have dipped out. I can, I will put in a ticket to ask my question. No, I'm so sorry. My, um, my power just completely like went out and back on. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yes. I can hear you. Okay. Hello. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> no, did were you guys able to hear me okay? Was it just on Amanda's end? I don't know, because sometimes my sound will also take a nosedive. I could I could hear you okay. Um, um, the question was in regards to, and you were talking about the current year-to-date amounts and that little extra um, double arrow, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What what the, what function does it play? Because I've tried to move things and respace things, and that seems to interfere a little bit with moving and respacing. So this has to do with. Um. um 
So this has to do with the list. So where I've mentioned before that some of these things are um, kind of set up within lists so that it can connect to like the appropriate record. Um, this is basically the ending to this list. So all I did was I highlighted those little arrows and then I did edit field. And it popped this up here and it's saying like after row, this list is complete. Um, basically what this means, so this is where it starts and then anything that's within this um, is gonna be specific to like a record within the record. Um, and what that means is this direct deposit notice is for a person and then within this list, each of these things are gonna be specific to one of their deductions. So it's gonna list out, you know, okay, so this is my federal, here's the amount and here's the total year to date for that federal deduction. But when we actually print this, let me go see, had one of these um, up here, you know, so then here's my city tax, here's the amount and here's the year to date amount. So all that like little arrow is doing on the back end is kind of like keeping that contained within that list. Okay. Um, I appreciate that. I just didn't know if it had more to do with column spacing and format or if it had to do with some programming issue. Cause I was uh, again, trying to re-space and those are sitting there taking up Base. So I appreciate you clarifying that it's actually really important to have those. Yeah, yeah, it is needed as far as the formatting and stuff. Yeah, that's where you'd want to play a little bit more with um, what you can see with these tables. Actually, and here's the thing, this one has like a table within a table. So since I didn't do a select, I couldn't see that at first. Let's see how these have the tables within the tables. I'm going to be honest with you, especially if it's with the current deductions and you're playing with that, it is very difficult. I think that's one of the reasons that this other form um, that I had, I ended up spacing these across like the entire um, way because the that table does get very tricky. I feel like I feel like I remember that. <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions about? Um, the USPS side before we switch it over to Michelle. All right, I think we're good. Let me um, stop sharing here. Thanks, Amanda. Let me get my stuff situated here. Okay. All right, so um, <clears throat> thank God Amanda gave you all the tips and tricks. <laughs> I kind of do it the quick and dirty way maybe. I mean, it just, um, it's uh, kind of my way to get through just making a couple changes in the form. So, um, but the tip about um, selecting all and doing the uh, table, brilliant. I wasn't aware of that. So I just did that on my forms. And we'll, what we're gonna do is basically go through an example of taking a billing and making changes to it. Um, we've had requests um, from districts, you know, that are using AR and are using, you know, the billing options and they're wanting to make it look pretty. They wanna be able to put the logo on and uh, maybe change things around on the form a little bit or get rid of a certain field because they're not using it. Um, so ARF never gave them those abilities. And so we wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, a lot of them would wind up doing a Word document and stuff like that. So we have the Word document now in here and we have the template. So um, Amanda already showed you guys where those templates are at. And we do have, I think I do have that up here. So just going back to those, um, to that useful procedure uh, page that she was talking about, we have an AR billing. And we have an AR payment. So that's the payment portion of the ARF, um, or ARF excuse me, of the AR uh, module. Um, obviously, receipts would be a separate um, form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the AR billing. And we'll see how that one goes. And maybe we'll tackle the AR payment. Um, but what I wanted to show you is when I'm in the instance and I bring up, let's say I go in and pull up a billing and print it. The PDF form right now 
looks like this. So, you know, it doesn't have all the, ni the nice bells and whistles on here. Um, so if they wanted to go in and make some changes, maybe, you know, they're sending these out and they want the remit to in here because of the envelope, the window on the envelope, and they want the sold information pulled over here. Um, maybe they don't use the due date, so they want to get rid of that. Um, so, and then they want to put um, the district's logo up at the top. And so we're going to try and do that here and make some changes and uh, see if we can get that to look the way that they want um, them want it to look. So what I'm going to do is I've got the form already pulled up. Let me just move a few things over here. to move my chat window over here too. Okay. And so this is the actual um, form, the Word document here. And so I went in and just did what, like Amanda did and went in and did select all. And then um, I went through the editing, mine's underneath editing. I did select all in here. And then I went and did all borders so I can see my borders. So, um, so for this particular form, what the district wants to do is they want to change a few things and add a logo. And so in there, let me see, I've got an example here of what I wanna change. So I do wanna change the remit to and the sold to. So I wanna move those around. Um, and I can do that, you know, different ways. Uh, what I found myself doing was taking the information and basically taking like the sold to information. And I just basically went in and copied that And then I went in and pasted it. Oops, sorry, back up. Maybe this isn't the best way to do it. And I just kind of put it over here. And I did the same thing with the other. Just for safekeeping. And then removed them. And then went in and took the remit to information. and moved it over here. I'm gonna leave that. And then um, went in and took the customer stuff And move that over to remit two. And then I just have to do one extra thing. So I'm going to get rid of these now. And I'm just going to go in and change this. and change my sold to and my remit to. And from there, um, the other thing I wanted to do is remove the due date. Um, they're not using it, so I can just go in and get rid of the whole thing. <clears throat> And the other thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to go in and create a logo um, 
And that could be created, I mean, if they've got their logo already um, and it's like a JPEG image or whatever kind of image it is, that can be put in here. And so what I did is I created one from Word. Um, and so um, I'm gonna put that in here. And like um, Amanda talked about, you know, there are certain things in here that you wanna make sure that it gets included within the page, because if you're going to go out and print multiple billings, you wanna make sure that, um, you know, that logo is printing on every page of that billing and not just the first one. Um, so I have to make sure that it's within this model object here. Um, and then you'll notice down at the bottom, way down at the bottom here is the end of that. Um, so what I wanna do is I just wanna make sure that it's within here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter here. And then I'm gonna take my image and this is uh, invoice. Let me pull that up. And I'm going to pop that and paste it into here. And I'm going to center it. And um, I think everything else is set for what I want for this one. So I switched the sole to and the remit to so that this shows in the window. Um, so here's my sole to. Um, I've got, let's see, the template information here. I got the remove date removed. And um, oh, one other thing I could do is down here underneath um, my listing of the items on my billing, um, service date seems kind of large because I know it's just going to be a date in there and description doesn't seem like it has enough room. So I could go and just move this over. Well, I thought I could, but now it's kind of locked up. And my whole screen is locked up. <laughs> Can you guys hear me okay still? Yeah, yes. my whole document yeah, I can is locked up. Sorry. I can't even move it around, so I'm not quite sure what I did here. I'm trying to undo. So let me show you. Luckily, I have this saved already, so I'm going to pull up my original one. So here is the one with all of the changes uh, made to it. So like I said, I removed the due date. I switched these two around. Um, I made the service date smaller. Um, and so everything's pretty much set to go. And so what I'm going to do now is pull this in. And like I said, I want to make sure that this is, is within this model object billing. So I don't want this logo to come before this because um, it's only going to print on the first copy. And if I'm selecting to print 10 um, billings, I want to make sure that this comes after the logo comes after so that it prints on every billing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in now and load this um, Word document in. So I'm gonna go into my instance and I wanna go down to report, report manager. Amanda already showed you this, but just show it to you again. And what I'm gonna do is basically create a form. And so my name is sample bill billing and description. I could say this is, let's say sample bill AR billing. billing template. Uh, one thing too with the tags is you could put something in there like custom form for all of your custom forms and tag them all so that you can go in and do a search on just custom forms and it'll show all the ones that you've made in USAS. You can do the same thing in payroll. And then my entity type is going to be billing. It's not AR billing, it's just billing. And then I'm going to select my form And 
is my billing template. And I'm going to go ahead and save this document. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into AR and go into billings. And I'll go ahead and just select. I know a couple of them are paid. There's an outstanding one. So I'll just select those three and do the print option. And I'm going to do PDF. And then I'm going to select the sampleable AR billing and go ahead and click on print. And I know that uh, I think it was Andrew um, asked about um, it defaulting to this. Um, we'll look into that for payroll. Um, I'm thinking yesterday I went to search for it because I was experiencing the same thing in USAS. I'm like, oh, I wish this would default. Um, and I couldn't find anything, but there still might be a, a feedback issue. If not, like you said, we'll create one. They might create one in common because they probably want to do this in both USAS and payroll. But we do have a feedback issue in USAS. It's feedback issue 310 that I believe um, will allow them then to default so that the Sampleville AR billing is always the default one. If not, they're going to go ahead and do what I just did. Click on print. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this up and see what I get. And so here is my billing now. So my before was this, and now my after is this. And so obviously, you know, that due date is gone. I flipped these and I made the service date column smaller so that I had more room to show for my description. And then my um, logo is at the top and it should be carried through for every invoice. Um, also, I did one for payments as well. So I'm just going to pull that up since I'm obviously having trouble editing. Um, and so this is the one that I edited um, for the receipt. So um, right now, I think I have an example of the receipt here. Here is what the receipt looks like without it being customized. And so um, you know, there's a couple things that I changed in here. Um, obviously, I've added the logo. And then I went and moved um, the receipt and the payment date and the check. And I put them all in this column uh, by going in and just editing, you know, things like I did with the billing. And I put them in a, a different order. It just looked cleaner to me to be able to do it that way. And so that's how I show it on my um, payment. Oops, sorry, wrong one. On my payment, so I put the check and then the receipt. Um, so the check number is if I entered in a check number on um, the billing, or I'm, I'm sorry, on the payment. So that might be the check number referencing the actual physical check um, that the customer um, paid with. Um, the receipt number is the USSR receipt number. And then the payment date obviously is the date I entered in when I made the payment. So those three. So those could be um, switched around as well. I could put payment date up at the top. And so, but I just, you know, kind of moved those receipt date or receipt was down here, payment was over here. So I kind of moved everything over in this area. I went in and added a logo. And for this one, just a little different. I just have, you know, all the address information, kind of a duplicate of what's here. I could also go in and update this and make it just a Sampleville um, customer receipt or something like that. In fact, I think I do have that. Let's switch that up while we're in here. So I'm going to get rid. Well, we'll just leave this as it is. Yeah. Um, so I do have this in here. Um, I got the customer receipt. Everything looks good. So at this point, then, um, you know, I'm going to load that one in. So again, just let me show you quick how to load that. So I'm going to go back into the reports. And go ahead and create the form. And then again, I could say, um, Again, I could put custom form. And in this case, my entity, my entity uh, type um, is going to be payment. I had billing for the AR billing. 
<clears throat> and I have a payment option for the air payment. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna select that form. And then when I select form here, um, go ahead and click on save. Now, if I went in and I selected the wrong one, like Amanda was showing you guys, I could go in and modify, edit this and do select form again. And go ahead and pick the correct one, which is this one. And then go ahead and click on save. And so now I have two custom forms in there. I've got my air billing that I just did a little bit ago, and then I have my payment. Um, and so again, I can go back into accounts receivable, and this time I'm going to go into payments. And then basically I'm going to select a payment to print. So I'll just choose one of these and click on, and I know it says print receipts. It really is the, it's not like a USAS receipt. It's a payment in ARF. So it's a, a payment receipt in, in AR. Sorry, I keep saying ARF. And then I'm going to do PDF and the AR payment template and click on print and pull this baby up. And oh, my customer receipt doesn't look very nice. Um, so I may have to do some tweaking um, to get that to where it's centered. But you'll see too all those things that I moved. You know, if there was a check number involved with this payment, that could go in here and it would show the check number, um, the USAS receipt, and the actual date that I entered in on the payment. So all of that information's in here. So obviously I have a little bit more work to do to move that over so that it's centered. Um, but you know, that's just going back into the document, making the changes, re-importing it in, and you're good to go. Um, and so those are the, the two I wanted to show you. Now I know, I think we have a ticket out here, out there about somebody wanting to customize their check form file. That one gets a little bit more detailed. And so um, we are, um, they're wanting to match it up to a physical check form. So that's something um, that we're still looking into to see what we can do. You know, um, when it comes to like these kind of more, more simple ones like this, where you're just moving things around, maybe not adding a field, you're just making changes to the existing form. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, it's just going in and getting comfortable with using that in Word. Um, but when it comes to something a little more detailed like that, obviously, um, if you're struggling with it, give us um, or send us a ticket um, with the form and all of that, and we can take a look at it and see what we can do to help you guys out. Okay, any questions? Oh, there's a question here. Can you change the font? Or does it need to be Times New Roman? I believe that, you know, you can go in and make those changes. Um, you'll notice that I increased the font size on this one. Um, so you can, I believe you can go in and make those changes um, and it will be reflected there on the document because it is a Word document. So you should be able to make those type of changes, whether it's bolding things, making the font different or increasing the font size. So you should be able to do that. So I did some quick testing because I wasn't sure about this one. And I know you can change it sometimes, but um, like Times New Roman Arial font works like the standard ones, but I tried to change it to one of the more unique ones and then that did default back. So okay. it may not be just any font. So if you're trying to do that, um, you probably just want to like test it out, but you can change it, but with limits probably. <laughs> right. Yeah, stick with something, I guess, simple and yeah. <laughs> don't get too crazy. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so these are just options. Like I said, mine's kind of a quick and dirty way of doing it, um, but it does get the end results here of uh, what needs to be done. And like I said, I just copy and pasted a logo in, like, you know, Amanda showed you, you can insert one in as well. If you've got one saved, obviously, um, you can load that in. And those should work as well. So um, it's just, you know, making the time to kind of play around with it and just getting comfortable with it. And once you, you know, have one district's done, like an example here with the billing, you've got another district coming on um, to do AR, you know, you can tell them, hey, you know, we already did a custom form for this district. And if that's something you're interested in, we'll get it set up for you and, you know, help you out with it. So 
so once you get, you know, a good feeling on customizing one and, you know, should be able to take off on the others. Um, so any other questions? I see we do have another one in the chat. Um, if the custom form needs to be shared with other users um, from the report manager. And this is in the U USPS side of the documentation. And I forgot to mention this. So thank you, Bonnie. Um, if you are uploading the form like at the ITC and then a district user needs to have access to it, like if, if they're not the one creating the form, then yes, you would have to use that share option um, to share it with a different role in order for them to have it in their drop down. That was a good question. Yeah, that was a great one. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing here if you guys don't have any further questions. All right. Um, I think that's it for us today. Um, you know, we like I said, we do have this recorded. Um, so um, we'll get that out there to you guys. And we said we didn't want to get too deep in the weeds with this. We just wanted to show you guys some very basic tools. Um, and obviously, if um, you guys have questions while you're customizing these forms, feel free to send us a ticket and uh, we'll see what we can do to help you out with it. Thanks, everybody. Have a good weekend.